to this taster session from the LLM module, Medical Law and Ethics. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Claudia Carr, and I'm a senior lecturer in Medical Law and Ethics. I'm also the deputy program leader of the master's program here at Hertfordshire Law School, and I also happen to be the wellbeing lead. Over the next few minutes, you're going to experience a very short taster session into one of the subjects we cover on the module Medical Law and Ethics. This is the very contentious, topical and fascinating area of assisted suicide and euthanasia. So this will only um, be a shortened version of the type of material we discuss and analyse in seminars. The emphasis is on a two-way street that we will discuss and explore and try and get to grips with some of the legal and ethical arguments that we find in uh, this particular subject. Of course, there are a number of topics we would cover and just thinking about a couple of others, we would explore abortion, organ donation and transplantation and new assisted reproductive technologies. Well, let's concentrate on this for a moment. Well, we go back to looking at um, 1961 when the Suicide Act decriminalised the act of suicide. Interestingly enough, if someone wanted to attempt to commit suicide and then failed as a result, they could actually be charged with the criminal offence of suicide, but failing. Um, so that seemed to be very illogical and suicide was decriminalised by the Act in 1961. However, assisting the suicide remained an offence and remains an offence to today, although it was amended and the wording now is that it is a criminal offence to assist or encourage an assisted suicide. Euthanasia um, is translated from the Greek to mean good death and this is where medication is administered at the person's request and consent and which has the direct aim of hastening the patient's death. So it's euthanasia is where you ask a doctor or another person to effectively end your life. Um, this is euthanasia in this country, in this jurisdiction, is extremely troubling, but there have been attempts at legalising assisted suicide and physician assisted suicide. And in fact, the uh, last failed bill that went before the Houses of Parliament in this country was in 2015, but it fell to pass. Um, there seems to be a real appetite that it should be legalised, and on the next slide we'll see some of those reasons. But yet, but yet I think it is extremely troubling for a Parliament to actually say that uh, it could be legal. But the reason why it could be legalised within the you know, foreseeable future, maybe in the next 5, 10, 15 years, is because actually of the Human Rights Act and Article 8, which some of you may be familiar with, which um, says that a person's private and that everyone has a right to a private and family life, if this means that the person wishes to end their life at a time and manner of their choosing because they suffer from some unbearable degenerative um, condition from which they will surely die within a short period of time, how does that conflict with section uh, 6? sorry, section 2.1 of the Assisted Suicide Act, of the Suicide Act, which uh, says that 
it is unlawful. So we have this conflict, this potential conflict between the incompatibility of Article 8 and um, the law. A quick look at what amounts to assisted suicide. Well, the only, um, the only real guidance we have from some time ago is where uh, a person was prosecuted for writing a book um, that set out how a person could commit suicide, but that they, there was an attempt at prosecution, but they failed to be convicted because they couldn't show a connection between the person's suicide and the sale of the book. Now, uh, in uh, more modern times, um, assisting a suicide could be um, helping the person who wishes to die in a Swiss clinic from uh, booking a flight um, because one cannot end their lives here, it would have to be in Switzerland. So something like booking a flight or making inquiries would mean that that would amount to assisting. So the question I've asked on this slide is, is there a right to die? There is no right to end your life. And we've already thought about the potential effect of Article 8 and its incompatibility with the Suicide Act. There is no right to die, but a person who is being treated can refuse treatment, even where it can lead to their death. This is, this is not the same as assisted suicide. And the difficulty with potential legislation with regards to introducing assisted suicide is balancing the wishes of those quite few people who want to determine for themselves the manner and time of their passing against the interests of society. Rather than about a right to die, maybe it's about a right to choose how we live. Perhaps it's that. But there are a few arguments, ethical arguments, that relate to assisted suicide. I'm only going to look at them terribly briefly. But, for example, a patient's autonomy, a person, if they have capacity, has autonomy to decide how to live their life then perhaps shouldn't they have the right to determine the point at which they end their life? People express a wish to uh, die with dignity. Well, what exactly does that mean? But it's no coincidence that all the uh, pressure groups and support bodies and even much of the legislation across the world that supports assisted suicide has the word dignity in it. But on the flip side, if we respect a person's autonomy and the wish to die with dignity, would the elderly and disabled feel duty bound to end their lives? Would they think, well, they've had a good innings, they don't wish to be a burden either financially or emotionally on their family, so if it were legalised, might they actually feel they should opt, opt for it? And then what would be the effect on the doctor-patient relationship? Would a person actually feel that if they went to the doctor and they were elderly or infirmed, then the doctor might actually suggest assisted suicide as a means of um, dealing with their issues, their pain, their pain management or something like that. And then finally, the argument is the slippery slope. And this is a huge ethical challenge. If we were to permit assisted suicide today or tomorrow, where would we be in five or 10 years time? Do we actually end up allowing euthanasia as many other European countries have? And what would the effect be on that society? So this short presentation is really a taster into what you might study on one of the modules on medical law and ethics in the LLM studies here at the Hertfordshire Law School. Of course, there are different modules to choose from, but this just gives you a little taste of um, your future experience.